Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is just a quick video to show how you can get a better feel and functionality out of your characters jumping with just a few lines of code. Um, so I've set up this simple 2D scene here. This solution will also work for 3D, but figure 2D was easier to visualize. And basically what I have here is a player object that has a rigid body, and when I press the jump button, this jump script will take that information in and give our player an upward velocity that we set here in our script. So basically what we can see here is when I hit play, and then hit the jump button, we get this jump and it works, it does what it's supposed to, but it feels somewhat floaty is the best word I can think of for it. It almost is like you're like on the moon or in a low gravity situation, and it just doesn't quite feel as crisp as you expect in a game. Now, one solution you might think of when you see something like this is you might jump over to your edit menu, go to project settings, physics 2D, and increase the gravity because more gravity means that you'll be less floaty. So we'll say, you know, negative 20, roughly double the gravity. Now we try jumping again, but now we're jumping very low. So we go back to our player and we increase the uh, jump velocity up to like something like maybe seven. And now we are getting the height we want again, but we're still, we're a little bit faster, but we still kind of have that floaty feel. So why doesn't our jump feel right? Well, the short answer is because you've played video games. While our jump is physically accurate, it follows the idea that however long it takes for you to get to the peak of your jump, your, it'll take an equal amount of time to get back down to the ground if gravity is being constant. While that's all accurate, it isn't really how most video games do jumping. For example, let's take a look at Super Mario Brothers. Here in World 1-1, we see that Mario can jump, and it doesn't look all that much different from what we had in our Unity example, but there's just something different, a little bit more crisp, a little bit better about the jump. So to help us kind of figure out why this is the case, I actually broke out one of these jumps into a frame-by-frame -frame kind of timeline. And when we look here, we see that the jump takes about 28 frames total. But what's really interesting to note is that he doesn't really get to the peak of his jump until about frame 18, and that's only, only then does he begin to fall back down. That means that he's spending 18 frames getting to the peak of his jump, and then only 10 to get back down to the ground. That's only half the time it takes to get down to the ground. And that's really where that feel comes from, is that you are kind of struggling up against gravity in the first half to two thirds of your jump, and then you're just once you get to that peak, you just plummet right down to the ground. It gives you this really weighty feel. It gives you this crisp jumping feel versus just kind of floating back down to the ground. Again, this is happening within fractions of a second, but it just it's a, just enough of a difference to make it really feel like you have this much crisper jump. Now, the other thing that would be nice in our jumps, if we go back to the video, we see that Mario can jump at different heights. And this is all dependent on how long you press that jump button. If you just tap it very quickly, he'll only jump a little bit. Whereas if you hold down the button, he jumps for a much longer time and jumps much higher. And this is something that's not really physics related, but is still a little bit difficult for us to figure out in our code because how do we tell Mario to jump higher? It, it would make sense for us just to be able to give him more jump velocity when we press the jump button, but unfortunately when we first start pressing that button, we don't know how long we're going to be holding it. So we don't know how much velocity to give him. And we could give him more velocity over the time we hold it, but that leads to a kind of a weird acceleration feel that really doesn't make sense in this sort of situation. Fortunately, we can actually solve both of these things by manipulating just one variable within our game, and that is gravity. In order for our character to fall faster, we just need more gravity. And likewise, if we want our character, if we take it as kind of the default that our character will reach the peak of his jump, like the highest possible peak of his jump, then what we can assume is that any time that he's jumping lower than that, again, there's more gravity. And so you might already start to be having an idea of how we're going to implement this, but now I want to jump into Unity and actually show the what's actually surprisingly simple code that you can use to apply more gravity to specifically to your character so that when they are jumping, you can control the height of their jump as well as make them fall faster. So back in our game scene, let me just kind of show you how I set up things so that we can kind of demonstrate this effect. I have a ground object, which is really just a sprite with a box collider 2D on it, as well as a player object, 
which has a box collider 2D and a rigid body attached to it. And then I gave it this jump script. Now this will also work, as I said, in 3D, you'll just be using the regular rigid body and box collider instead of the 2D variants of them. We'll jump into the jump script quickly. And we can see that all this has is a public float for the jump velocity, as well as the simple update method, which simply checks, are we pressing the jump button down? Not, and not just holding it, mind you, it's the get button down, so it's the moment that we press it. And the moment that we press it, we apply to the rigid body's velocity. We set that equal to vector 2.up, so we're only using the upward motion, and multiplying that by the jump velocity. So that's all we need to get started here, and right now we have our basic physics appropriate jump. So how do we get the better jump into this? Well, we're going to create a new C -sharp script. I'm going to go create C -sharp script, and I'm going to call this better jump. I'm going to open this up in Unity as well, or in MonoDevelop rather, and we can delete all of this for now. We might come back to a little bit of it later, but first thing I'm going to add here is a public float called fall multiplier, and this is how we're going to be multiplying, this is how much we're going to be multiplying the gravity when our character is falling down. I'm going to set it to 2.5 for now. Second, we're going to have a public float called low jump multiplier because again when we release the jump button and are applying more gravity so our character doesn't jump quite as high we're going to again be increasing the gravity. We'll do this one a little bit less. We'll just say 2f for that one. Now these these two numbers may end up being the same for your game depending on what kind of feel and what kind of um, fine-tuning you need to do but I like having the flexibility of having them, having them be two different numbers. Next, I'm going to include a reference to our rigid body 2D, call that RB, and we're going to create a quick void awake function method. And in here, all I'm going to do is hook up the rigid body to this reference. So we'll say RB equals get component rigid body 2D. Lastly, is the actual the what's really just kind of four lines of code that's going to give us the um, proper jump feel that we're looking for. And this is going to be in the update function. Every frame we're going to check for a couple of conditions. The first one is if our rigid body's velocity.y, so that vertical motion, if that motion is less than zero, meaning if we are falling, then we want to apply our fall multiplier to our gravity. And how we do that is we're going to say rb.velocity.y plus equals vector 3.up. So we're only dealing with the vertical axis right now. So if we did happen to have some walking or some other you know horizontal motion, we wouldn't be messing with that. We're strictly dealing with the vertical. Actually, this should not be dot y. We can't, you can't actually um, affect an individual axis within a um, vector 3. You have to um, edit the full vector 3, so this should just be rigid, rigid body's velocity um, as a whole, or in this case, sorry, vector 2 in this case. So yeah, so this should be vector 2 dot up because we're dealing with the 2D. And so here we're going to say rigid body dot velocity plus equals vector 2 dot up, just dealing with the vertical, times physics 2D dot gravity dot y. So that's the whatever we set for the y value of gravity. Right now it's just the default 9 point, negative 9.81. Um, the changes that I put in there earlier don't count because I was doing that in play mode. Next we're going to multiply this by our fall multiplier minus 1. And the reason for the minus 1 is that physics in general, Unity's basic physics engine, is already applying one one multiple of the gravity, just you know, just normal gravity is being applied. So if we're trying to multiply this by 2.5, we've already got one of that, so we only need one and a half times more gravity. So that's why I'm subtracting um, the 2.5 minus one. This is kind of accounting for physics, the physics system's normal gravity. Oops. So we'll put that in there. And then lastly, we'll multiply this by time dot delta time because 
the gravity is per second and we don't want we want this to be you know just the fraction of a second that is this particular frame and so that's really what's going to create our uh, our faster fall in fact we can check that out right now if I jump back over to unity go to our player and we add this better jump component we can actually see this part in action already if I hit space that fall is a lot quicker now it gives that much a little bit weightier of a feel you can certainly again kind of fine-tune that number if you want it to fall even faster you can increase it um, but that you know there's a d distinct difference between that kind of struggling upward and then plummeting down for our jump section it's pretty much the same idea except we just have to check one more thing here we're gonna have to check else if rb dot velocity dot y is greater than zero meaning we're if we're jumping up and then we need to check that we're not still holding the jump button because if we're, remember if we're checking if we're holding the jump button the entire time we just want normal gravity we want to reach our normal default peak of our jump it's only when we release the jump button that we apply more gravity and make it a lower jump so if we're doing a quick button button press then we get the lower jump so we'll say if we are jumping upward and we are not input dot get button and this is just get button not get button down because we're looking at holding the button down not just put the initial press and the string of jump so if we're not holding down that jump button then we're actually going to do this exact same thing here we're going to apply additional gravity again so I'm going to copy and paste this the only difference is that instead of our fall multiplier we're going to do our low jump multiplier we'll save that here and now when we go back we've got our better jump we hit play what we see now is that if I just tap the space bar we get a very low jump but if I hold it I jump all the way up and in both cases we still get that little bit quicker fall so with that with like I say these just these four simple lines of code five if you count the closing bracket you get both a weightier feel to your character and the ability to control your jump height depending on how long you hold that jump button so thanks for watching i hope you find this useful in your game development in the future and i'll see you next time